Hey guys, how you doing? Josh here from Momentum Productions. And today I have a very, very special video. Uh, this is something uh, I've wanted to do for a really, really long time. And by long time, I mean a couple months. And that is reviewing the unique Typhoon H and the DJI Phantom 4. So first off, let's talk about the price. The Typhoon H is priced at $12.99 while the DJI Phantom 4 is priced at $11.99. The Typhoon H is a hexacopter, meaning that there are six rotors, while the DJI Phantom 4 only has four. What's really unique about the unique Typhoon H is that if one motor fails, it can still fly on five motors. The maximum flight time of the unique Typhoon H is approximately 25 minutes, while the DJI Phantom 4 is about 28 minutes. The Typhoon H is only capable of a transmission range of one mile. However, the Phantom 4 can go up to 3.1 miles. The unique Typhoon H comes with a plastic body along with carbon fiber landing gear and carbon fiber boom poles to hold up the motors. The maximum speed of the DJI Phantom 4 is 20 meters per second, while the Typhoon H only does 10 meters a second. The DJI Phantom 4 comes with forward collision sensors and downward facing sensors that are used to track the ground and have it hover indoors without using GPS. While the Typhoon H uses ultrasonic forward collision sensors, the DJI Phantom 4 uses optical sensors to avoid collisions. Now both these cameras come equipped with a 4K camera that are both stabilized by a three axis gimbal. The uh, Typhoon H allows for 360 degree panning while the DJI Phantom 4 is fixed. Both cameras are capable of shooting 4K video and shooting 12 megapixel stills. The Typhoon H comes with a 115 degree field of view while the DJI Phantom 4 has a 94 degree field of view and both cameras on each drone come with a fixed aperture of 2.8. Now let's talk about the packaging and unboxing process of each drone. Both boxes fit the drones nice and snug. Looking at the unique Typhoon H case, you'll notice that there is no hinge so the lid can just fly off. Also, there is no handle so you can't really take it anywhere with you without holding it with two hands. It's really not that portable. So it looks like with the unique Typhoon H, you definitely need to buy a third party case. However, when we turn to the DJI Phantom 4, it does come with a hinge and the lid that opens very nicely along with a handle, which means that you can carry it around with you. The unique Typhoon H does not have any battery level indicators, while the Phantom 4 has four battery indicators. Next, let's talk about the remotes. The Phantom 4 has a really nice, sleek, and modern looking remote that comes with a mobile device holder capable of holding an iPhone 6 Plus and even an iPad Air. When you look at the Typhoon H, you'll notice that it has a built-in 7-inch touchscreen monitor. The touchscreen is extremely responsive and has a very beautiful, vibrant screen. It feels like a real tablet. Both controllers come equipped with tilting control, the Typhoon H comes with panning control, the DJI Phantom 4 comes equipped with a return to home button, and the Typhoon H also comes equipped with a return to home switch. Unfortunately, the Typhoon H does not let you adjust the return to home altitude. This can be a huge problem and can cause accidents. Both remote controllers have dedicated controls and dedicated buttons for movie record and still picture taking. Also, both have a rubberized grip, making it pretty nice and comfortable for you to hold. Next, let's talk about setting up each drone and build quality. To set up the unique Typhoon H, prop up each motor arm until you hear that clicking noise. Now, let me tell you about the issue with this. If you look closely inside the motor arm, you'll notice that there are exposed cables that are being bent forward and backward each time you open up and close down the motor arms. This can cause some problems in the future as it can wear out the wiring. Next, we can easily remove the gimbal cover on the camera simply by grabbing the top part of it and pulling it out gently. Notice how the camera on the unique Typhoon H is not balanced. As soon as you remove the gimbal cover, the camera immediately flops to one of its sides. This is no good. Unique did not do a good job balancing this camera. Having a really close look 
of the Typhoon H, you'll notice that its antennas are exposed and simply sticking out of the body shell. Talking about the shell of the unique Typhoon H, it feels very, very cheap. To me, it feels like the shell can crack very, very easily. Simply, one hard landing can do the trick and get you a really nice crack in the shell. Inserting the battery is pretty simple. Just make sure that the unique logo on the back of the battery is facing upright and gently insert the battery in the back of the drone until you hear an assured click. To remove the battery, lift up the back flap and pull out the battery. I am not a fan of this design as it feels very fragile and easy to break. If you take a look at the motor arms, you'll notice that it's carbon fiber. Pretty nice quality and it feels sturdy. The landing gear is also carbon fiber. Now a feature that the unique Typhoon H has that the DJI Phantom 4 doesn't is that the landing gear is able to lift up, allowing the camera to pan 360 degrees infinitely, giving you a field of view without having propellers in your images. However, I cannot say that that's the case 100% of the time. If you go fast enough on the unique Typhoon H, you will see propellers in your shots. The unique Typhoon H comes with quick release propellers that are very, very simple to put on. Each propeller is color coded with either a black ring or a silver ring on the top part of the propeller. Just match that color to the motor and simply twist in the direction marked on the propeller and it will lock into place. To remove the propeller is just as easy. All you gotta do is press down on the center button and twist off. Now let's bring over the Phantom 4 and set that up. The build quality on the Phantom 4 is really impressive. The shell is extremely hard and it feels like a rock. Also, if we take a look around the DJI Phantom 4, you'll notice that no odd wires are sticking out. Everything was really well engineered and designed in the Phantom 4. Just like the Typhoon H, the Phantom 4 also comes equipped with a gimbal cover. To remove the gimbal cover, simply press down on the plastic tab and it should pop off simply. Be careful not to be rough with the system, otherwise you can snap off the camera. Installing the propellers on the DJI Phantom 4 is just as easy as the Typhoon H. Both come with a quick release system. To install the DJI Phantom 4 propeller, simply grab a propeller and color match it to the motor. Press down and twist and it will lock into place. Remember, before flight, always double check that each propeller is securely fastened against the motor. To remove the propeller, all you have to do is press down and twist in the opposite direction of when you were putting it on. Before flight, it's always important to do a compass calibration. Now on the unique Typhoon H, compass calibration was really, really tricky. It is easy to initiate the compass calibration. However, it is not that easy to perform the compass calibration. Basically, I had to grab opposite motor arms and twist them and wait for the LED indicators to change color, then go to other arms, do the same twisting motion, go to the other arms, do it again. However, on the DJI Phantom 4, to perform the compass calibration, it's a lot easier. All you have to do is hold it out away from you and walk in a circle, turn it vertically, and do the same thing and wait for the LED indicators to change color. That's it. I really felt confident doing that with the DJI Phantom 4, but the compass calibration on the Typhoon H really wasn't that simple. So when it comes down to compass calibration, I give the Phantom 4 thumbs up and the Typhoon H thumbs down. Let's get these things up in the air and see which one performs better. So starting the Typhoon H up is pretty simple. There's a button up top here. You hold it down and wait for the chime and just let it do its calibration of the camera. All right, we're ready to grab a remote. To start up the remote, there's a switch here. Just push it to the left. So the Typhoon H also comes with what is called a wizard. The wizard is a remote controller that can control the aircraft's velocity and altitude. However, you cannot switch between the RC and the wizard while you are in mid-flight. And you also lose all telemetry data on the RC while using the wizard. The remote controller also does not have a map, so you cannot tell where your drone is at any given time. Also, 
This is the screen I usually get when starting up the RC. Sometimes it doesn't even connect to the camera at all and I have to restart both the remote controller and the drone. All right, let's see how this thing flies. Okay, and we can take off. There it is. Landing gear is lifting up. And let's go for a fly. Yeah, you know what? The Unique is actually a pretty slow machine. It only does about, I'm doing only about 28 miles an hour and that's because the wind is helping it. It would only go about 22. The camera stays pretty stable. See, I'm doing a whole bunch of abrupt movements with the sticks, but you can't really tell looking through the camera because it does a pretty good job of stabilizing. So now I'm gonna mess with the follow me feature. Let's see how well it follows me. It doesn't use active track like the Phantom 4. It uses GPS. So let's see how well it does. All right, let's do follow. Will it follow me? Or is it just a gimmick? So after starting the follow me feature on the Typhoon H, I noticed that there is quite a bit of lag on the system. I would have liked to see the camera move along with my body and not just the drone. Unique uses a GPS feature instead of what is called the active track feature that is used on the DJI Phantom 4. Telemetry I get on the remote, altitude I get my speed and I get my distance and I just have the voltages of the cells, or, or just the voltage of the battery. And what uh, the Unique likes to do, it likes to alter its altitude. You can notice in this next shot I filmed with the Steadicam, it was very difficult to keep the subject in frame, to keep the drone in frame, because it kept changing altitude. So the Phantom 4 doesn't do that, it keeps the same altitude. So watch how I land, and you're gonna see that it likes to bounce. You see that? I don't like that. What happens if it bounces and tips over? You're gonna damage a rotor. Let's go ahead and fly the Phantom 4. Here is the uh, DJI Phantom 4. I'm gonna go ahead and place it on the ground. To start it up, you press the battery pack button in the back once, and then the second time and hold it and wait for the gimbal to calibrate. The Typhoon H takes three minutes to start up while the uh, Phantom 4 starts up in probably around 30 seconds. And I like having my phone a part of the remote because a cached uh, version of the footage you take is stored on your phone in case the drone does go, go down, you do have some sort of footage. The Phantom 4 is, it has a few redundancies like a dual compass and a dual IMU. So if there was one IMU that fails or gets an improper reading, the second IMU takes over and corrects itself. Just just like the uh, compass on the system, it does, it does a similar thing. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch the DJI GO app. The DJI GO app is very straightforward, very easy to use, it's just very user friendly. It doesn't seem like you need to be a professional to use it. So that's a really big plus about the DJI Phantom 4. Here we go, arming the motors. And just the sound, it sounds very, very clean. And it also has a geofencing system, so it tells you when you're approaching a no-fly zone. There's a few modes on the DJI Phantom 4, like sport mode, and then obstacle avoidance mode, and then plus there's active track, and I'm going to go over those features. So when you're in obstacle avoidance mode, you go about 20 miles an hour. Here it is. It already senses us, it stopped on its own. So I'm gonna go back, it's really dusty here. <laughs> All right. Let's go up, and let's go ahead and start recording some footage. Okay. Awesome. Now, the Phantom 4 has active track, which means that you can select the subject, and the Phantom 4 will direct itself autonomously uh, towards that subject and it will follow that subject. You also have follow me mode which uses GPS. 
And on the app, you can go ahead and press on active track. All right, so I'm gonna select myself. The active track did an excellent job following me. Not only was the drone following me, but so was the camera. This was awesome. And I know that I'm going to use this feature a lot. Let's see tap to fly. So basically tap to fly is another cool feature where I can select anything that I see on the screen and have the drone automatically fly to it. So let's see how that works. So let me tilt the camera up, point to a tree, Press go, and let's see how it does. I can also increase the, the speed. You can also cancel at any time by pressing the pause button, and it's gonna pause the flight. So there is a pause button on the remote, which you can see right here. That's the pause button, right there. That's the pause button. The Phantom 4 also has a sports mode. So I want you guys to take a look at this and see how cool this is. Watch how fast this thing can go. I'm gonna bring it close to the camera. Okay. Here it is. Okay, I'm gonna go into sports mode. Here we go, ready? And I'm gonna launch in three, two, one. Look at that. It's pretty quick. It's very, very quick. So I love that. After flying with both drones, I've noticed that both the DJI Phantom 4 and the unique Typhoon H have issues of propellers poking into footage if you're flying too fast. I suggest to slightly angle down the camera to avoid this issue. I'm going to go ahead and bring the Phantom 4 back down for landing, and I'm going to I'm going to show you how well this thing lands. It's very it does a very soft landing. Um, unlike the Typhoon H, which just doesn't care about how you land the thing, this thing is actually very simple to land and it's just very graceful when it does it. Let's check it out. I'm going to pull down and it just very, you know, very softly lands on the ground. And it actually detects the grass, which I think is pretty cool. It uses optics, 3D cameras in the front to determine depth and that's how it avoids obstacles. Let's go ahead and move into picture quality. On the left we have the unique Typhoon H, and on the right we have the DJI Phantom 4. The Typhoon H footage looks pretty orange. It's definitely having some white balance issues. On the right, the Phantom 4, the blues look blue, the greens look green, and the whites look white. It has a very natural color. The Typhoon H just can't keep up. The beauty about shooting in 4K is the ability to zoom in in post. Here we have a still frame from the Typhoon H and the Phantom 4. Let's go ahead and zoom in on each still frame to see which image will look better. Both drones are at a similar distance away from me. If you look close enough, you can tell that the Phantom 4 image looks a lot sharper than the Typhoon H. Take a good close look at the trees and the grass. Now it's time for the moment of truth, obstacle avoidance. We are going to be testing both the Phantom 4 and the Typhoon H's obstacle avoidance system. The Typhoon H uses ultrasonic sensors, while the Phantom 4 uses optical sensors. So I have a fence, a picket fence back there, and we're gonna use that as our obstacle. So we're gonna start off by testing out the DJI Phantom 4 obstacle avoidance. Then we are going to go to the unique Typhoon H. All right, so let's give it a shot. So before takeoff, um, the Phantom already sees an obstruction within 14 feet. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take off, fly backwards a bit, and then see if it'll crash into the fence or not. Here we go, arming the motors. The whole point has been a takeoff. And I'm recording. I'm gonna fly backwards just a little bit. And let's see what happens.
Nope. Look at that. Gives you an audible alert that you're that you're close to the wall, and it just it doesn't let you crash. <laughs> Let's try it again. Let me come back a little further. Okay. Full speed. Let's see what happens. Yeah. It just stops. Third time's the charm, so let's try it one more time. All right, full speed. Full speed forward. Boom. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? It just, it doesn't let you uh, crash into the wall. All right, perfect. Let's land it and then take out the Typhoon H. Obstacle avoidance is on. Typhoon H is ready to roll. Here we go. I mean, it looks to me like it's working. But I don't get any warnings on the screen like I do on the Phantom 4. It likes to jerk, you guys. And oh! Let's take a look at the replay of the Typhoon H in slow motion. As we can see, the Typhoon H begins to approach the white fence. It senses the obstacle and breaks. However, it then continues forward and collides with the white fence. It looks like the obstacle avoidance was working for a few seconds, but then lost track of the white fence. Obstacle avoidance was on, it was struggling, and it finally made the error. However, it looks like the camera can be stuck back on. Hey guys, so now we're going to conclude this video by deciding which drone is better than the other. Well, from the footage you've seen, <laughs> I think the answer is pretty clear. The winner is the DJI Phantom 4. It's sleek, sexy design, along with a whole bunch of features, just makes it a pleasure to fly. And the footage that comes out of it is excellent. The unique Typhoon H just couldn't keep up to par with the DJI Phantom 4. As you can see, it was struggling with follow me. It was also struggling with its obstacle avoidance system. And that is why it crashed. But the DJI Phantom 4 is the way to go. So thank you so much for watching my review video. Also check out my website at capturethemomentum.com. I have my blog there. We talk a lot about filmmaking and photography, new technology that's coming out. And I just can't wait to see what you'll create. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.